The Knicks, this is like the most New York ass team that 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 there is, bro. They're playing just like a New York Knicks team. And, and you know, when you think of the Knicks, especially like later or early in the past that the playoffs and stuff, you know, back in the day with Patrick Ewing, John Starks, all of those guys, you think toughness, right? You think, oh, the Knicks are a tough team. They're physical. They play like, you know, they're bullying Jordan, trying to push him down and, and fight the Pistons. This is pretty much that same Knicks team. And it's always fun seeing the Knicks win. I will say, I'm not a Knicks fan, nothing like that. I probably never will be, but it's it's very entertaining to see them win because right now, each win that the Knicks get, the fans are just tripping. It's, it's wild. The internet is in a frenzy. And if you're not on uh, Knicks Twitter, <laughs> Knicks Facebook, whatever, you need to get on there because Knicks fans is just insane. They're pretty much the Cowboys of the NBA. <laughs> they, Knicks fans are entertaining as hell. It's a wild place there. After every single Knicks win. And maybe it's the same way with the Giants or Jets. I just haven't caught on. Who knows? But definitely with the New York Knicks, oh my gosh, this is a wild, wild scene every time they win. But the thing that's that, that's even cool and, and it's going to get better for the Knicks fans is the New York Knicks, they're about to beat the Pacers in five games. Whew, crazy, crazy. But they, they play better defense. Um, they grab crucial rebounds, and they have an aggressor on the offensive end, which is going to help them a lot in Jalen Brunson. But even though it may not show for the offensive rebounds and the rebounding in the game, man, when you break it down into the stretches of the game, like when teams need extra possessions and when the Knicks need to get the ball back to score, they somehow always end up getting the ball back to score. Because if you look at the totals, it looks fairly even. If you don't watch the game and you just look at the stats, you're going to see, oh, well, what do you mean the Knicks are, are dominant on the boards? They got the same amount of rebounds. They're getting out-rebounded by the Pacers. What do you mean? Yeah, I know they don't tell the whole story, but looking at the eye test and when you watch these games, you will see exactly what I mean. If you watch the New York Knicks game, you'll see Josh Hart literally flying from the three-point line to grab a rebound, flying from the other side of the court to grab a rebound. OG Ananobi doing the same thing, flying across the court to grab a rebound and pass the ball right back to Jalen Brunson <laughs> so he could be the one to shoot. Because he's the only, he's the offense. Jalen Brunson is the offense, which I'll touch on in a second. But literally, the Knicks are winning these games. They beat the Philadelphia 76ers by punching them straight in the face. And they're beating the Indiana Pacers by doing the same thing, by literally just punching them in the face and being more aggressive. They're winning the 50-50 balls. They're grabbing the crucial rebounds. They play defense, and they pass the ball to Jalen Brunson to score. None of these teams have been able to stop Jalen Brunson, which I'll tell you why in just a second. But the Knicks aren't stacked offensively. They don't have a, a beret of, of three-point shooters or a stacked roster full of three-point shooters. They don't have ISO players who can create a shot anytime. No, they literally just play like they want it more. And this is what's been helping them because each time they're, they're going to fight for the loose balls. And the def best belief, they're going to get the loose balls if it's out there. So you got to keep that in mind. But once they grab the ball... What do they do? Pass to Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson here, he is the guy. He is the guy that's orchestrating the Knicks offense and ultimately why the Knicks are having a lot of success. And offensively, teams are letting this guy go 1v1 each time. And I just don't understand it. Because a guy like Brunson, if you let Jalen Brunson go 1v1 every time, it's going to result in a bucket every single time he goes 1v1. That's just what's been happening, and that's what's going to continue to happen if you don't bring an extra defender. I need to see some sort of adjustment. I, I failed to see Philadelphia make the adjustment of bringing a double team toward Jalen Brunson or blitzing him or just like throwing a different look at him to get the ball out of his hands. So yet the Indiana Pacers are doing the same exact thing. They're not getting the ball out of Jalen Brunson's hands, and this is what's hurting them because not only is the Pacers' offense a little stagnant, which I'll touch on, give me some time, but the defensive end is really what's killing them. We've seen, uh, uh, I think it's Tyler O'Connell or O'Connell. We've seen O'Connell. He locked up. He was playing great defense on Brunson, holding his own, making Brunson work, and that's the best thing you can hope for when you're playing against a great defender, but... It's kind of messed up that they leave that guy on the island the whole time. Or when he comes out the game, they go back to letting uh, Halliburton get chopped up or whoever else is guarding Brunson get chopped up. No, with great players, you are idiotic. If, if you have the chance to double and get the ball out of their hands, you're idiotic if you don't do it. 
You got to take advantage of these things. Because if not, they're going to continue to score over and over and over again. And now you're going to find yourself down 12 with four minutes left in the game. And their start on caught fire. Now he's not missing a single shot at all. So you got to switch some things up. And that's that's what I'm witnessing from the Indiana Pacers. They have yet to switch it up. I think one game they'll get it right. But other than that, Knicks, they're going to continue to punch him in the mouth. And then on the offensive end, Indiana Pacers is in trouble. They're in trouble. Oh, my gosh. This offense, this is not what we've seen earlier in the season, even in the end season. Turn. This is not the offense that I'm used to seeing uh, from the Indiana Pacers, bro. They need an aggressor. It, it's been bothering me. I'm watching his team play because they have so much talent and they're filled with so much talent of Sayakum and, and Halliburton on the same team and even uh, uh, Turner. Like they, they have so much talent on this team, but it's been bothering me because nobody is an aggressor. And I put this on the blame of, of Halliburton because he's the one with the with the dominant skill set, probably one of the most skillful guys on the Indiana Pacers team. But yet he's not being aggressive and making sure this offense has opportunities to score outside of him. And what I mean by that is that if Halliburton starts rolling, he starts balling out like he did in the first half of game two where he had 22 points at half, it, it makes it easier for other guys to get involved in the game because now all the attention is on Halliburton to score. So then, yeah, you have a, a Pascal Sayakam who can, can create easier opportunities or catch and shoot or get easy drives to the bucket. You have an Evan Turner who's going to play baseline and get an easy bucket. You have guys who can can where the game can open up for them. But without that, without one person being aggressive, you don't have to worry about anybody. Everybody's being passive. And, and that's what's hurting the Knicks right now because Halliburton taking one shot in the third quarter? Are you kidding me, bro? Are you kidding me? That's not good enough. I think he took a minimum of two shots in the fourth quarter. Didn't really let it fly like that. So don't quote me on a fourth quarter amount of shots. But one shot in the third quarter is absolutely ridiculous when the game is close. And you've been aggressive in the first half. So we need to see more out of Therese Halliburton. And I think he's going to open up the game for a lot of his teammates. But somebody has to be an aggressor. And they definitely got to play a lot better defense on Brunson and defending him. Because... He, he, that's literally why the Knicks are scoring. That's why you see Josh Hart, DiVincenzo getting their buckets because by the time Brunson has already opened up the game and made the focus on him, teams are trying to adjust to that. They're paying more attention to what Brunson is doing on the floor, leaving opportunities for Josh Hart to get an easy layup in the lane, leaving opportunities for DiVincenzo to get an easy open three-pointer. So, hey, man. And then best thing, easy or a good defense creates that easy offense. And I've been noticing that with the uh, New York Knicks as well. But look, man, I got a quick clip of uh, DiVincenzo. I'm here. This is him after uh, game two. So DiVincenzo, he had a comment to say um, about Jalen Brunson's injury. As you know, um, Brunson, he, he missed the whole second quarter of game two. And the man still finished with 30 points. Which, <laughs> crazy, crazy, which is insane. But anyway, this is DiVincenzo on Jalen Brunson and that next up mentality. I think one, there's a, you know, there's a blueprint here that Tibbs has laid out. Um, and no matter who's on the court, um, everybody follows, you know, that and doesn't go outside of themselves. So um, no matter, you know, who's in the game, um, we know what we're looking to get. Um, and you know, any game that we play, as long as we defend and we rebound and, and we have low turnovers, we can win any game. And, you know, that was the mindset tonight. Um, you know, they, you know, we hit them in the mouth and then they came right back in the second quarter and um, took a lead. I don't know what we were down to halftime, but, you know, you know, we're in the locker room. Like, we're going to win this game still. Um, we got to do, you know, we got to defend, we got to rebound, limit their second chances and, you know, and then play our offense, not get outside of ourselves, and that's exactly what we did. Um, so, you know, whoever we have on the court, it's, it's, it's the same thing. 